are back home. Thank you to all those who prayed for safety as we were traveling. Uh, you all know we had, we're having some issues with the Jeep. Uh, but praise God, God brought us home safely and another dear pastor that had gone to the conference also was having issues with his his car and the Lord made a way for dear brother Birch, one of the, the pastors that actually came and helped us with our church that helped do all the, the remodeling and the, the fixing of things. He's got such a heart. He pastors in Lake Placid, Church of God. But he actually drove like an extra two hours to to take on a trailer uh, this other pastor's car to his house in Sebastian. There's such a joy when you know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Such a peace. And as brothers and sisters in Christ, we lift each other up. You know, God knew exactly what the situations were with our Jeep, exactly what the situation was with Brother David's um, car. And God made a way for Brother Birch to be able to bless. You know, he connected us, just the right people at the right time, to be able to help one another. You need to know that in your life, God's always there. He will always make a way. It's not always the way you may think it is. But when you accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of your life, your life is now not just your own, but it's God's. You know, good parents, when they have a child, they don't let that child grow by themselves. No, that parent is involved. So God is involved in your life. He wants to be involved. You have to realize that He is always watching over you. This morning, I had on my heart just the love of God. I was thinking of that song, Where Would I Be If It Wasn't For The Love Of God? You know, the mercy He showed upon me, His grace. So that's what we're going to be touching on this morning. You've tuned in to Matt and Randy in the morning. We're here to encourage you in the Word so that you can be strong in the faith and live victoriously in Christ. For that is where true victory is found. I am going to start reading in Romans chapter 8. Again, just remember that our subject is a love of God. Listening to what the Word says. And I'm actually reading out of the CSB version. Because for this, it just seemed like it was clear. So, dear Heavenly Father, Lord, as we get into your Word, I ask that your anointing flow from your Word to each one of our hearts, Lord. Give us ears to hear and hearts that are willing to say yes to you, Lord. May we have that mind of Christ, that helmet of salvation, Lord knowing that you are with us. May your word edify our spirit, our soul this morning. Lord, may it just oh, grow strong within us. May it find fertile soil in our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. Romans 8. I'm starting with actually verse 1. Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, because the law of the spirit of life in Christ has set you free from the law of sin and death. See, Jesus bore our sins on Calvary. You're no longer bound by the law of sin, but you're free in Christ. For what the law could not do since it was weakened by the flesh, God did. He condemned sin in the flesh by sending his own son in the likeness of of sinful flesh as a sin offering in order that the law's requirement would be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh but according to the spirit again Christ bore on Calvary our sins he came down for 33 years he came down and put on this flesh of ours but yet without sin 
so that he could be the sacrifice for our sins, so that we could have forgiveness when we mess up. We can cry out to Abba Father and say, Lord, I'm sorry, I messed up again. Forgive me. Help me to overcome this. And you know what? You will. You will. It goes on and says, For those who live according to the flesh have their minds set on the things of the flesh. But those who live according to the Spirit have their minds set on the things of the Spirit. Now the mindset of the flesh is death, but the mindset of the Spirit is life and peace. The mindset of the flesh is hostile to God because it does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it is unable to do so. In the flesh, you will never be able to follow the law. But the Spirit of God in us ha, goes on and says, Those who are in the flesh cannot please God. You, this is talking to the believers, However, are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit, if indeed the Spirit of God lives in you. If anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, he does not belong to him. Now if Christ is in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the Spirit gives life because of righteousness. And if the Spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead lives in you, then he who raised Christ from the dead will also bring your mortal bodies to life through his Spirit who lives in you. So then, brothers and sisters, we are not obligated to the flesh to live according to the flesh, because if you live according to the flesh, you're going to die. But if by the Spirit you put the, to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all those led by God's Spirit are God's sons. For you did not receive the spirit of slavery to fall back into fear. Instead, you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself testifies together with our spirit that we are God's children. And if children also heirs, heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ, if indeed we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him. For I consider the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory that is going to be revealed to us. You know, things, the hard times in this world and stuff, they can't compare to the things that God is preparing for us. For the creation eagerly waits with anticipation for God's sons to be revealed. For the creation was subjected to futility, not willingly, but because of him who subjected it in the hope that the creation itself will also be set free from the bondage to decay into the glorious freedom of God's children. You know, I look forward to the day that we will be able to pet lions. You know, when a snake will no longer have that poison that can kill us. It just, it's going to be the way it was with Adam and Eve and the animals. There wasn't that fallen state. What a wonderful uh, thing God is preparing for his children. Goes on and says, For we know that the whole creation has been groaning together with labor pains until now. Not only that, that but we ourselves, we have the spirit as the first fruits. We also groan within ourselves, eagerly waiting for the adoption. The redemption of our bodies. You know, those times when you just don't even know what to say. It's like, oh Lord. We know that one day he's coming back and he's going to make things right. But until then, there's those moments when it's like, oh God. I need you. And the Spirit of God somehow strengthens and encourages you and reminds you of the hope that we have ahead. Oh, it says, For we know that the whole creation has been groaning together with labor. Not only that, but we ourselves have the Spirit as the first fruits. We also groan within ourselves, eagerly waiting for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. Now in this hope we were saved. But hope that is seen is not hope, because who hopes for what is seen? 
Now, if we hope for what we do not see, we eagerly await for it with patience. You may be going through hard times. Wait, wait for the promises of God. Wait for that hope of the things that God is preparing for us. Wait patiently. It says, in the same way, the Spirit also helps us in our weaknesses. Because we do not know what to pray for as we should, but the Spirit Himself intercedes for us with inex inexpressible groanings. And He who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit, because He intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. You get that? Spirit of God interceding for you. Jesus is interceding for you. You're not alone in your battle. The Lord is with you there as well. We know that all things work together for the good of those who love God, who are called according to His purpose. For those He foreknew he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, so that he would be first born among many brothers and sisters. And those he predestined, he also called. And those he called, he also justified. And those he justified, he also glorified. This is the triumph that we have. Listen to this. What then are we to say about these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He did not even spare his own son, but gave him up for us all. How will he not also with him grant us everything? Who can bring an accusation against God's elect? God is the one who justifies. Who is the one who condemns? Christ is the one who died, but even more has been raised. He also is at the right hand of God and intercedes for us. Who can separate us from the love of Christ? Can affliction or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? As it is written, because of you we are being put to death all day long. We are counted as sheep to be slaughtered. Now, no, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ our Lord. Get that? Nothing can separate you from the love that God has for you. So keep a praise song in your heart. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. We'll see you tomorrow.